What's up everyone, this is Hikitech Playground and this episode will be very different because we'll talk about secret scanning and secrets around, maybe about secret management a little bit, but this will be like comics about conquering the secrets and we'll have an epic blast talk about this. I will also show you some very interesting concepts that I do believe that you might enjoy. What actually are secrets? Secrets can be token, it can be password, it can be API token, it can be AWS or Azure credentials. It can be like lots of things that you even didn't consider as secrets before. So it can be like any kind of sensitive information that you can use for access. It can be not just tokens. It can be whenever you consider as a sensitive data and it can give you like automatic access to some system. And you will find out that like GCP tokens can be, it can be lots of things or for example tokens for some api that are using in some third party service it can be even environment variables that can be hard coded so or high entropy strings no they, they usually identify a secret itself and this is problematic so let's deep dive in our world of secrets and know a little bit more about how we can detect them and how we can prevent their commits to our code base how we can actually get the credential this is also used commonly in many attacks and it can be very problematic when you have anyone scanning your public repo or getting access to your private repo so there are a few tools that will allow you to do that so one of them is a basically git leaks the tool for gathering secrets from the github repos it can detect it can prevent you against uh, committing a secret so it is a very useful tool it will even allowing you pre-commit hooks even what is very good tool, which is working a little bit differently, is a Trufflehawk. Trufflehawk is a search, search, I would say not engine, but search tool that allows you also to identify high entropy strings. That means very random strings in your code. Another really interesting tool is a Gitrop. And Gitrop is, a very, is based on Golang, and I really like the icon of it or the, the logo of it. Uh, basically, Gitrop is a clone of the repository itself and scans the sensitive information pushed in that repositories on GitLab or GitHub. Another tool is a token hunter, which is looking for the tokens itself. And another tool, which is interesting, it's a git wild hunt, aka git hunt, which is inspired by a wild hunt from Witcher. So you have also like detect secrets or you have uh, git secrets, you have different tools that can allow you to help with gathering your credentials and knowing more about your repository itself and on, on also on your call base. If you are looking for enterprise grade solution, I can recommend to you GitLab like enterprise version or they call it GitLab, GitLab Ultimate. Or you can use Trufflehawk Enterprise. Trufflehawk is also my favorite tool for scanning secrets. Or if you are looking for something really fancy, you can use GitGuardian, which also helps you to identify the secrets in your code on the enterprise level. It can also do some aggregation. It can tell you more. It's, a, so it's sort of very interesting platform that also is very good to explore from the enterprise grade solution. So if you are not looking on just for just CLI tool and you are looking for something that is having higher grade, this is actually a really good choice for you. Another super cool solution. I will not go in the details because few years ago, I think it was 2019 that when I was talking about this, this tool on, on some conferences with like thousands of people, I remember that like today. And this tool grow up with, with the technologies itself. So Secure Codebox is another way how you can run your secret scanning. If you will look at the Secure Codebox, you can deploy it in your EKS cluster on AWS or in Azure, whenever you like. And it uses uh, custom resources and operator to run your scan to create basically Kubernetes job in the pod that is being executed. And then the tool actually runs there. And then it is it's passing the results. And you can store the results in S3 bucket. You can use Defect Dojo or Elasticsearch to feed the data there. This is super cool. Why I'm talking about that is that you can run secret scanning from that. And out of many great tools like SamGrab or SSH Audit or Trivy as Bob, like lots of great tools which you can orchestrate with Secure Codebox. One of them is actually GitLeaks. And I will go here, here is the GitLeaks. So GitLeaks is one of them. You can use Helm charts to update and install the Secure Codebox. The configuration is pretty easy. You are using actually the, the parameters of the tool to configure them with a the scheduled scan. So it's, it's also very good. And you can have use a human friendly commit URL. So basically you can have very easy uh, way how you can operate the scans for whole github organizations 
There are some requirements on Kubernetes cluster version. So that's something that you need to check out. And also the values for your Helm chart. If you are deploying that with Argo CD, that's also something that it's good to check. And there are also like a few examples, uh, like how you how you can execute the scan. You see that secure call box, metadata around it, specification volumes that you actually need, uh, the init, init containers that you want to run. And, and, and again, the parameters of the tool. So you can provide also your own rules with the kubectl or kubectl, whatever you call it. And you can create your own config map with your own, own configuration. This is super, super cool. If you will have time, just check it out. What can be actually secrets? And these are like cloud tokens in the code. You can see here that it can be Slack token, RSA private key, SSH keys. It can be PGP. It can be Amazon access key. It can be GitHub tokens, Google API keys. It can be Heroku API keys. So lots of different things or OAuth tokens or access tokens, you know, a YouTube API key. And if, if you are looking for more actually how these tools work, if you will go to repository of Trufflehawk, you will find by yourself that it has very comprehensive list and also regular expressions, how it identifies specific tokens, how we can actually prevent the leakage of our code. You can use a git leak pre-commit hooks. You can, that's something what I really recommend to use pre-commit hooks that will not allow you to commit the secrets. Also, if you have any access token or AWS access keys, you need to limit the scope of these access keys. You can encrypt the config values with Mozilla Soft, as we'll talk about. It's also a very good solution for in-file encryption. Also, you can use linters where possible to identify a secret or sensitive data in your code. Or you can use typical SAS tools. Or you can encrypt or decrypt, uh, basically encrypt the, not decrypt, encrypt and mask CI credentials with some anonymization engines. Also, you can focus on dedicated CI CD credentials to scan them, or you can have also like specific workflow that will look for the scan, for the secrets or scan the secrets and use secret management like HashiCorp Vault or AWS Secrets Manager. That was actually my first episode on YouTube when I was like learning how to do videos. And I really recommend you also check that one because you will see the big difference. And that's something that I also recommend to use like proper secrets management and move repository to private and then rotate the credentials in case of the leak. That's super important. And it will help you to build a proper secrets management protection. It's also worth mentioning one very good blog post from AWS, especially from this guy. I will not say the name because I don't want to insult anyone by bad pronunciation. So it's, you can search it by yourself. And he talks about the DevSecOps software factory. And when you will scroll down, you will find out how actually to build, how actually build a whole software factory with the different security tools. But what is important here is the Git secret itself. Git secret scanning can run in code build and basically scan your code in your AWS. Basically code the code from the code commit. So out of all of these great tools that are in this diagram, including Falco for runtime monitoring, OvanZap proxy for dask scanning, Encore and Sneak for SCA and static testing, that's, that's something really, really neat that you can run out of your code build because you can execute basically CLIs, which is very cool but you can actually run a Git secrets or any other secret scanning tool in AWS code build to, sh to make sure that you don't have any secrets in your code commit or even in the S3 buckets that you are using. And this is something that I recommend to read to everyone who is actually serious on AWS security. Mozilla SOPS is absolutely blasting and great solution, which is like it encryption for like in a file. So if you have any configuration files and you want to encrypt the data inside of these configuration files and you still need to commit them in your code, SOPS is an editor of encrypted files that supports YAML JSON, environment variables or binary formats and encrypts it with AWS keys, GCP key MS, Azure Key Vault and or PGPs. So you have a very different ways how you can encrypt the data and then get basic access by decrypting the data inside of the configuration file by yourself. And it's, it's also something that I really recommend for you to get, go there and explore it. Let's talk a bit about pre-commit hooks. Pre-commit hooks are very important for every developer. It prevents you from committing the passwords or secret in your code even before you will push it through your GitHub repository. It scans the commit, commit messages, and also it checks 
if there are no secrets inside of your Git repositories. One of them is Git secrets. You can easily install it with Git secrets dash 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 install. And once the hook is installed in your Git repository, you can have it is also part of your repo. It's it basically reuses non-fast forward merges for that repository and it will be prevented from committing the secrets. So that's something that I really recommend to check by yourself. And it's also something as what is I want to say back but best practice but good practice to be healthy in your security program for application security. Using linters is very important. And I recommend to use various linters. You can have Git leaks, you can have ESLint, you can have all of them basically, or you can have Trufflehawk. My favorite one is Megalinter. Megalinter is like all in one linting and it creates a like very good GitHub action or GitHub workflow and prints out the result in a really nice table and brings you the D developer experience that you actually want. So check that out and it's very good tool to have in, in your belt of tools for DevSecOps. Okay, so one way how you can actually run a Git leaks or any other linting solutions together is Megalinter. Megalinter is one of my favorite linting solutions. So let's go to my PR. So I have a PR in a fake lab on my repository in, in my GitHub account. And I will go to, to the case one develop PR for Megalinter. Megalinter is really good solutions because I really have just a few files with the secrets inside and it can detect it. It can detect even more. It has a gazillion of checks, including like hundreds of linters, hundreds of like copy paste detections, all of these things that you will be surprised that it can have. So when I will go to, uh, to the checks itself, you will see that the, there are a few checks. One of them is mega linter on pull request. And second is a generic mega, mega linter on push. And it, it basically scans different things. So when I will go to conversation, it also prints the results in my PR. And that's something that I call real developer experience because these things are actually in the developer workflow. So when I will go to the report itself, there is a Git leaks. And you see that there's check off that I was talking like in my one of my videos. And there's also Git leaks, Git lift, uh, Git diff, sorry, a secret link, Trivi, Trivi, Trivi S-Bomb, lots of these things. So Trufflehawk, which is one of the solutions also, it, it works a little bit differently than Git leaks. So when I will go to Git leaks, I'll click on that and it will show you the mega linter setup and the different linters that are available for you. You have even different reporters and different flavors of mega linter, which is really cool. It's one of my very favorite solutions for linting and detecting the secrets and, and basically making your code ready to production. You see that there are lots of all supported linters. I will just go there and there's bash, C sharp, Golang, JavaScript, and I will just scroll through that you find out like gazillion, gazillion of tools for spell checks and whatever. But let's go back to my PR and in the PR itself, if I will go to the arrows itself, so it create a table, then go to Git leaks, which is also a very good solution for detecting the secrets. And I will go, I will try to read it. You see that the mega linter lasted for one minute and 45 seconds. So I will click on that. And it will tell you, tell me all the parameters that it runs with it. And basically, when you have here the list of the linters that I'm executing for this PR. So let's find out where we have the git leaks. The git leaks is here. And I'll click here. It will show me the result of the tokens. So it will tell me that I do have, this is a fake key. You see that I have some keys in the history that are stored in my Terraform files. And it will show me all of the occurrences of the secrets that I have in my code, including the fingerprint and the, the line of the Terraform code that I have here. This is something that is very good. You can even try different linters and different results. For example, Trivi, there's no key, nothing for Chekhov. There's an R because I didn't scan like the real Terraform code. And even for the copy paste, I have some issues there too. So there, there are lots of things to, to go through and to discover. If you want to go, for example, to another linters, you will find out like spell, 
you know, I have lots of uh, typos there. So it's also will show you errors and, and the problems that I, I do have here. I also have some vulnerable code here for my showcases. So it, it shows you lots of lots of things that are really good. How this thing is being set up. When I will go back to the pull request, it's it's two files and you can generate one of them with the installer. So if I will go to, to my changes, in the changes itself, there is a GitHub workflows and there's a workflow file with the Terraform itself. And this is a mega linter. I will show you the file itself. If I will go to the raw file here, I will try to expand it. You see here that this is the change that I did. This is jobs and mega linter on with the some permissions that you need to set up. Then the steps with the checkout, the mega linter itself. The commented uh, commented code is basically something that you can enable and also like create a pull request applies. You can you can have different compare commit, lots of things that you can you can put in the configuration of the tool itself. When I will go to Megalinter itself here, it's one of the files that I do have here, Megalinter YAML. That's just a configuration. That's just, just a configuration here. That's just a configuration of like what I want to enable or disable from the linters itself. So one of them is a workflow file and second one is an configuration with the linters that I want to execute in my workflow. And I will say that's a pretty neat solution. And that concludes today's session. I really hope that you enjoyed today's video, which is, which is very different from my previous ones. And I really like to do very different videos. Actually, I'm having like, I would say better speeches on the conferences because I have like actually more time to prepare. And I would like to bring this to you on my YouTube channel. I would like to improve it a lot. So I hope that the next videos will be better and better and they will bring you more and more technical expertise from, from my field. I would love to share with you everything, everything that I'm doing, but not everything can be shared publicly. So I still believe that you enjoy this short session about secret scanning and a little bit of secrets management, but this is like important to scan your secrets to not get any leak. In, my, in some of my previous job, we get jobs we had like so serious serious leaks that are really that can be catched by easy workflow in github they can be catched by very simple stuff if you will do the proper best practices on your code so don't neglect that and if you like this if you like this video don't forget to comment here don't forget to subscribe don't forget to like it you know that and you know the drill so i'm looking forward to see you next time and this is executive playground and expect more